Father, we come before you today. And we walk in and we embrace what your word says, that as the deer panteth for the water, oh, my soul longeth after thee today. Father, we longeth after you today. Father, that you would just pour out your spirit, that you would just pour out your healing power, your delivering power, just like you did in, in the gospel that you went to the temple and you opened up the scroll and you said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to break yokes and break bondages, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to set the captive free. God, and we ask that you would set the captive free today. Set the captive free today, God. Set the captive free today. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is here this morning. Lord, let joy, let joy be here this morning. We give you glory and honor and praise, and we sing of your goodness. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above. We love you. We thank you. If you have your hands, just lift it up. Just say this. Say, I love you, Lord. You can be louder than that. Somebody shout, I love you, Lord. Somebody shout, I love you, Lord. You've been good to me. You've been faithful. Even when I haven't been faithful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I can't tell you enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, are, you don't need me to thank him. You ought to just let it bubble up out of your spirit. And you ought to take about 30 seconds and just thank him. Until something leaps down in your heart. Until something leaps down in your spirit. Like a baby kicking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've been so good. Father, we thank you today. We love you. We rejoice in your presence today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on, if he's been good to you, put your hands together and clap so loud that your hands turn about purple, red, or orange. And just let somebody know that he's been good. Amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I was like four of you. We're really glad to be. I mean, how many are really glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Man, we're so excited that you're here today. We're so, so excited that you fought through so many things this week to get here and to be able to fellowship. And I know, I know for us that well, I know for me, we just fought a little bit. I was telling the first service uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to shake you down for any money right now. But I am going to ask you. Just, just we're using the terminology here in huddle and some other things that just get locked in. If you can lock in, that'll be my gift to me. Just get locked in. It's been a, a long couple of weeks. Noah decided. Our youngest Noah decided to play football for the first time ever. Uh, his senior year decided to play football, and I didn't realize that I'd had to buy brand new tires and make sure my oil was changed to be able to play for football. We, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks, I don't even know, we drove four hours away in the lower part of West Virginia and had a football game. Had to come back there. Last week we went two, two something hours away and had to come back there. This past Friday we drove three hours and had to come, yeah, so it's been a long, uh, tedious uh, week and uh, it's just been, been just, it's just been been a week, so just just lean in, and then today, just trying to. I, I love our team, and they 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 really set the stage um, to invite the presence of God. But just some Sundays, it just seems like. What could go wrong goes wrong. You ever have days like that? It just seems, that, and that was just today. Like everything, it seemed to could go wrong. Everybody's been scrambling, but they do an amazing job just to make sure that 
that they do things with excellence, that we feel the presence of the Lord, that we're, we're, we're honoring the king. And that's what we remind people, that we're honoring uh, the king of glory. And so we're just setting the table that you can come and feed. So why don't you just give a, give a little hand clap for the team, for our team that just does a great job. People come in on Saturdays, they set up, and after service when you all are celebrating, enjoying it, they're tearing things down and going, so we appreciate them. But like I said, today was just one of those days, and some people and are here, and I had to cancel and things going here. Um, Brittany's not here. If you're not on Facebook, Brittany had her baby. Brittany had her baby. I'm assuming she's watching online right now. If we're online, congratulations, Ms. Brittany. So she had her, had her baby, so we're excited about that. Um, you got a good report, right? Is that what's going on? You got a good report about your cancer, right? Excited, excited about that. You look great. And you keep fighting, keep going. So we're excited. So you, crazy things, but some good things. That's just how, you know, how the enemy works. So um, I haven't been putting a title to some of my messages, but today I'm going to put a, a title. And it's just one word. I, I want to talk about warfare. I want to talk about warfare today. So um, as before we dive into that, uh, let's just pray. Let's take a moment and let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for the wonderful people here at Impact Church. I want to just thank you for the, the leaders and those who serve and those who just give everything. I want to thank you for what you're doing in Robin's life, how you're just continuing to that heal that cancer that has just gone. And, and even the uh, unspoken things that people have out here that are just beginning to see uh, the light in the middle of darkness in their life. And, God, we just want to thank you so much. We want to thank you that we just got a, a, a group of people here today that are ready ready to lean in, that are ready to be like the woman with the issue of blood and press through the crowd today uh, for your presence. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, some scriptures, I'm just going to mention the scriptures, but I'm just mentioning, I'm kind of on this new kick thing. Maybe it's just about just getting old a little bit, but I want you, because before when we first planted Impact, I'd have like 20 scriptures up there. But now I'm trying to make sure that you go. We have technology. We have people that, are, that God is using. Um, Jimmy DeMarco comes in. He does notes. He's here at the 945 service. I think he's serving somewhere today or something. Um, and he takes notes, and we put it on our app. So all the, he's putting all these scriptures on there. Plus, we have the YouTube and all that. So I want you to die. So I'm going to give you some scriptures but some of it, I want you to get your Bible, and I want you, when you get an opportunity, dive into it. Re go in. Get a marker. Highlight it. Look at it. When you get an opportunity, just go in there and just like, man, I, I want to do it. Because even Jesus himself, and they were talking this at the, at the men's uh, Bible study, and it was so good. Stephanie was asking me how the men's Bible study was, and uh, my, I call him my dad. He's really my stepfather. Um, and somebody thought he was my brother the other day, but we call him Pap. <laughs> They're like, that's your dad? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, man, I thought that was your younger brother. I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> like, I know I'm gray hair, but come on, man. <laughs> and uh, we were doing the Bible study, and, man, and he just, he just, Stephanie was asking me how the Bible study. I was like, man, Pap just flat out preached. Like, Pap just went to it. And one of the things that, one of the things that, uh, he was talking about, and it's, it's just so true of knowing the word, you know, not just, not just hearing the word, but knowing the word. And, and he brought up this scripture, uh, he brought up this passage that even Jesus himself, when he was tempted of the enemy, even though he was the word, he spoke the word. Because John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the word, but when the enemy tempted him, he spoke the word. That man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. And Pat was just breaking it down. I thought, man, if I had like a little organ or something, I'm like, dude, dude, come on. Like, it was like, go ahead, Pat, like, had a little church. I was almost took off running around the Weirton, you know, but I figured they'd call it Popo, so I didn't. So, um, and just, so I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you just to, to get in. But one of the scriptures is in 2 Corinthians, and it's not going to be on the screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And it says this, for the weapons of our warfare, somebody shout warfare. 
for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. And it goes on a little bit deeper, but I really want to focus on that because it mentions the word warfare there. Somebody shout warfare. Uh, it's important, um, and this is the road I want to run down. It is important that when we, that you understand that when we become Christians, uh, let, me, I, let me not even use that terminology. When you decide to become a follower of Christ, when you ask Jesus into your heart and you decide, you know what, I'm going to be, because it, it, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. It's having a relationship. That's what we're about. We're not about rules and regulations, but we're about relationship with him restoring that relationship with him. And so when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you are automatically, whether you like it or not, you are automatically involved in a vast spiritual war that spans both heaven and earth. Whether you like it or not, automatically, you're in. In the spiritual realm, we don't talk a lot about this at church, but the spiritual realm is very real. We see that throughout Scripture, and we're seeing it unfold in the world now of what's transpiring, what's taking place. Jesus told us these things would come. We're seeing hurricanes, and we're seeing, you know, flooding and, and fires. I think it's Montana or Wyoming is like on, like on fire. There's so many things that are, that are taking place. It's, it's the Bible that talks about the birth pains, about the, the king. But there's so many things happening in the unknown, right? Well, I would say the unknown, the, 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 the spiritual realm. Not to, get, not to get fruity on you, but, we're, but we're, we got to learn something. Hello? Though we walk, though we walk in a body of flesh, our real battles are not physical battles. They are spiritual, and we must fight them with spiritual weapons to walk in the victory that Christ has won for us. Let me explain, because it's kind of part two of what I preached last week. Colossians chapter 2, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public, a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Amen? Having nailed them to the cross, right? We, we, we can, last week, that's what I preached. If you, didn't, if you weren't here, you could jump on YouTube or something and get that. But what I'm saying is that we have to learn to walk in that. Because it can get, for people that are new, it can get a little confusing because you're preaching one Sunday about, no, he triumphed over all that. He made a public spectacle of that. I came forward and I pinned it to a cross, Pastor. But now you're telling me I, ha I have this battle? You you're telling me that the enemy walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? You're telling me to resist the devil and he will flee? I thought we, I thought we got the, the victory. The, the best way I can explain it, the best way I learned, um, you know, God speaks to me sometimes in, uh, in sports terminology. I'm a big sports guy. And, 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 God, and I was like, oh, God, I'm trying to figure it out. It's like a, uh, in boxing, it's like a, a fixed fight. You already know the winner, but you still got to fight. And, he, and, and you're in a fixed fight, you will still, still get knocked down. In a fixed fight, you still get punched. If, in a fixed fight, you're still going to bleed. But we know who the winner is. So if we flip over to Revelations, we know who the winner is. We, we win, but we still got to fight. Does that make sense? That's, that's the best way I can explain it. Maybe you have something deeper and something more vast, but that's, that's just me. Was that all right? All right, good. And so um, Steph and I have been trying to um, teach our boys. Oh, we heard from Josiah last night. I should have thrown, that, thrown out that. He's doing great. Yeah, he's doing great. But, but, but him, same here with him, you know, just talking to him, the things he's battling. And, and even with Noah, we're, we're trying to, to teach him because, because both of them are, are, are going into a different stage in life. Noah's getting ready to graduate high school. So he'll go to a different stage. Joe's in, Joe's in the Army. He's in basic, and so he's going through a different avenue in his life. But we both try to teach both of them that you can't fight spiritual issues with worldly weapons. And it's a, it's a lot more difficult nowadays for my parents out there. Can I just talk to you for a second? I'm with you, parents. I'm with you. It's tough. 
it's tough nowadays. Back, back, in, back in my day, like my biggest issue, maybe my biggest problem was like who I was picking on Tech Mobile, whether I was going to get 56 points on Tech Mobile and Thurman Thomas was going to score five times. You had, to be, you had to be in that generation to know a little bit about Tech Mobile. So I heard somebody says they got me out there. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Tech Mobile guy. And, and so that was a big issue. Kids, kids nowadays, I mean, just talking to our kids, it's whoa. Everything being pulled everything coming at them, you know, whether it be social media, how this, look at this, and how, you know, it's, okay, let me go. But, but parents, I'm with you. I'm with you, but we, gotta, we, we really got to um, train our kids up. The Bible says train them up in the ways of the kingdom, in the ways of the world. And I think one important moment here is that we can't fight spiritual issues with worldly weapons. Does that make sense? And we see this in scripture throughout scripture. There's, there's a lot of scriptures that I can uh, throw on you today, but I, I want to talk just about a couple of them. One of them is, and I'm going to pull it up here, is Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And this is talking about Paul, Paul and Silas. And just to give a little background, Paul and Silas, um, this is the same Paul and Silas. This is what led up to Paul and Silas in the prison. You ever hear, I, I think I preached before when they were in the prison and they started praising God and God opened all the doors, but they had been beaten. So this kind of led up to that. And it says here, now it happened as they went to prayer. As they were going to prayer, that's, we'll get to that. That a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. As they were, head, as they were heading to prayer, it's always when you're doing things of the kingdom, and Stephanie preached on this, I talked about this, it's always when you're doing things of the kingdom, the enemy attacks. You, 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 you don't hear anybody, well, I was on the way to the Steelers game, and the enemy come after me. He was trying to keep me from getting to that Steelers game. He was trying to get me, Joe, I got you from the Browns game. It might have been the enemy. It might have been, but... <laughs> I, I, I don't know, you know, you never hear that. Like, well, I was on to this game or I was heading here and there. It's always, it's always when you're doing things of the kingdom. When you're heading to prayer, the enemy attacks. And Stephanie talked about Hannah and Benaiah and as she was heading there, the enemy. And if God's saying it more than once, you, he's, he's trying to grab your attention. <laughs> he's trying to tell you something. And so they're heading to prayer and this girl who is operating, somebody shout operating. That's important. We're going to get into that just for a second. So operating through a spirit of divination comes after them. That, 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 that word divination in the Greek is the Greek word pythos, which we get the word python, which comes, which goes for, forward that we, you pull from this. Really, it's saying that uh, a girl possessed with a python spirit met us. A girl with a python spirit met us. What I really grabbed from this is that python, a python is known for its hold. Right? A python is known for its hold. And I almost went down this road, but I, I kind of was like, oh, squirrel, and I kind of went this way a little bit. But I almost went down the road, what has a hold of you? What has a hold of you today? Does depression have a hold of you? Does addiction have a hold of you? Does a sin have a hold of you? Does worry have a hold of you? Does fear have a hold of you? This is, this is what it's, 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 it's talking about. This, this, this spirit is trying to get a hold of Paul. You say, what do you mean? Because, she, she, because it goes further. I'm not giving you all of it because you've got to read it when you get home. But if you follow this, if you follow this passage along, you see that, that she's vexing him. She's going after him, that, that, that this spirit is trying to get a hold of him. And you read a little bit further that he's, he's getting angry. He's getting upset because it's trying to get a hold of him. We have to go back, and, this, and, and just going back is that we can't fight spiritual issues with worldly weapons. And Paul is teaching us something that Jesus taught us. Peter is close with Jesus, correct? 
He's the one that when they were out there and he says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And he starts walking on water and then he sees that Jesus reaches down. He's talked to Peter. Peter's close with Jesus, right? But then Peter has this conversation with Jesus and tell, talking to him about not really, hey, you don't need to suffer. You don't need to go through this. And Jesus says something so profound. He says, get behind me, Satan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He doesn't say, hey, Peter, do you not get this? Do you not understand? He doesn't pull Peter aside and say, Peter, what are you, what are you talking? Peter, listen, have you not listened to everything I said? Have you not grabbed everything I talked about? He did not even say, hey, Peter, get behind me. No, he looks Peter square in the eyes and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Because so often, we, the enemy, tricks us that we get caught in the fleshly fight and don't realize that behind it, there's a spiritual fight. And Jesus said, I'm not even going to get caught up in battling with you, Peter. I'm not even going to get caught up arguing with you, Peter. I'm not even going to get caught up in this conversation. I'm going to go to the source I'm going to go to the root, and the root of it is the enemy. The root of it, and, and oh, let's, uh, can we, can we, can we, and, and so, and so this is where we see with, 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 with Paul, this, we see with this python. A python has an interesting way of killing its prey. They literally, it literally squeezes the life out of you. It'll choke out your joy. It'll choke out your peace. It'll choke out your courage. It'll apply pressure. It'll apply pressure until you're defeated. It'll apply pressure until you're defeated. The spirit, this spirit was operating through her. Somebody shout operating. The spirit was operating just like God can use you to do his work. The enemy will use people. And so often we get caught up that we take it personal. But you don't realize the spirit that's behind it that's operating through them to destroy you. To choke out the purpose that's down inside of you. What's a python? A python squeezes the choke out. There is purpose in you. There is destiny in you. Jesus in the Bible talks about it's like a child down inside of you. Just like when people question that Jesus come, why did he have to come through Mary? He could have just popped out of heaven. Why did he come through a virgin to teach us just like he was formed in fashion and was pushed out? God puts purpose and destiny down inside of you and it begins to go in you. Just like when, when Mary got around and a baby began to leave, purpose will begin to leap down inside of you but everything that you go through is like contractions in your life and you begin to push out oh come on y'all hear me listen so so the enemy can operate through people now let's 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 i'm not that guy here so don't not everybody's a devil i don't want you going to work monday firing holy water at people my pastor said you a devil. My pastor said you a devil. I'll be all over YouTube. You a devil. Not everything has a devil. But the Bible is very clear. To be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. It's having wisdom. It's having wisdom to know. So when you get back on the, the bridge and there are all that construction, you see a construction, don't roll your window. You're a devil. You hold me up. But the spirit was operating through her. Why? Because at some point she opened the door for the enemy to work through her. At some point she opened the door. This is kind of, I could go down the avenue of like a good hill and brimstone preaching, you know. 
But this is why preachers say, be careful. Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful who you get counsel from. Hello? And the enemy will find people. When that door is open, the enemy will find people. And he'll work through them. Let me put it this way. This is why some people at your workplace, at your high school reunion, or on Facebook will never like you. Because your spirit irritates their spirit. Your, why do you think with the Apostle Paul, why was she, of all the people that were in the marketplace, why was she going after Paul? Because the spirit she was operating in Paul's spirit was irritating her spirit. And some people at your workplace, you're so bent out of shape, I don't understand why they don't like me, and I don't understand why they put their nose up at me. Because your spirit is of God. Your spirit is of hope. Your spirit has light. Your spirit has purpose. Your spirit has something. Their spirit has darkness. And so every time you get around, it's like when Mary and them got around, the baby began to leap in her, and Elizabeth and the baby began to leap in her womb. When you get around somebody with darkness it becomes ugh, ugh, ugh. why would you wear that dress that just don't look good on you why would you and, 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 and the enemy knows exactly what to use a little comment like that when you're already dealing with self esteem a little thing can do that Oh, don't, you don't have to shout me down. I'm preaching all right today. But Paul, Paul, later on, just a couple verses down, Acts chapter 16, verse 18, she kept, she kept going around. She kept vexing, kept vexing, kept falling, kept falling, kept falling, kept falling. Paul was getting aggravated. That's what it says. Paul was just getting aggravated. The amplified version of Acts chapter 16, verse 18 says this. She was wearing him out. You ever have some people that are just wearing you out? Don't raise your hand if you're sitting next to them. <laughs> wearing you out. And that's what she's constantly just, and it says he was wearing him out. I want to say this. Don't take the bait. Let me explain. Hey, Jonathan, can you bring that out? Don't take, let me make sure I got everything. Don't take the bait. This is a perfect illustration that I, I, want to, I want to give to you. You see it? Don't take the bait. What do you mean? This trap is a perfect illustration to understand how the enemy works. Number one, you have an open door. The enemy says, do not give room, do not give place, do not open the door to the enemy. There's an open door. You come back a little further, there's a little thing that there, they call it the bait station. What we would call it is the lure. Luring you in. Appealing. Open door. The temptation. And if the enemy can get you, now I'm trapped. Now I'm trapped. Th this, this is it right here. This is it. And then what happens? You're trapped in unforgiveness. You're trapped in shame. You're trapped in offense. You're trapped in sin. Somebody say, come on. Did you say, come on? Can, can, I, can I go with it? Can I go with it? That's all it takes is, is an open door. Scrolling through your phone, an open door, and a little cheeky boo half-dressed. Right? That tells my age, chicky boo. That's what we call him. I don't know what they call him nowadays. I'm afraid to ask Noah what they call him because I, he, I, he's, my, he's my urban dictionary. <laughs> but 
but that's, but that's how he works. And then all of a sudden now you are trapped. You're trapped. It was just, it started with just a, a little look and now, now you're trapped in a porn addiction. And, and you go, oh, I said it. But it's not just like that. It's just even self-esteem. Just a door open, an opportunity, and now you're, you're, struggling with, you're struggling with these thoughts. You're struggling with this stuff. You're trapped, you're, you're trapped in an offense. You're trapped in sin. You're trapped in regret. You're trapped in disappointment. You're trapped in addiction. Now, this, now, now, now he's got you. Am I saying you got to be, you got to be, you know, Steve Urkel your whole life? <laughs> but here, here's, here's this Paul, Paul, right? We're talking about Paul. Paul, it, it, he learned something. I tell my kids, you got to learn from what you've been through. Or Stephanie being a history teacher, you're doomed what? To repeat it. And Paul learns something real quick through this whole, this chapter here, what we're talking about. Paul is learning something because then he begins to address the, 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 the Corinthian church. First and second Corinthians. And he says it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He says it this way. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. He learned from Acts that he's telling the church, whoa, hold on. Be mindful of what the enemy's doing. And that's why I said, not that you're a Steve Urkel, but, but when you're scrolling, you see something, and it's like, okay, no, that's a, that's, that's, that's a device, that's a scheme of the enemy. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. When something in Facebook and somebody's saying something, just scroll. Put your hand out like this. Put your hand out like this with this. Now go like this. Yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, see that? Look at that. Ah. Oh. Yeah, see that? Ah. Oh. See, oh. Yeah. I'm done, bye. Ah. <laughs> uh, the freedom that comes through that. The freedom. The freedom. I just did a little dance, right? The freedom that comes through that. Just keep going. Don't go down the rabbit hole and then look on there and then look on her page and then see if they're still married and see, well, I wonder why they act like that. Oh, I would have left her too if that was the case. Oh, I knew she'd get divorced. I wouldn't and she wouldn't make it. I can't believe it. I know she's talking about me. I know he's talking about me. Just keep going. Oh, she related to Rhonda and I can't stand Rhonda. I didn't know they were related to Rhonda. And then all of a sudden you're on Rhonda's page. Paul, it was a python spirit, but for you, it might be a deceiving spirit that's after you. The python spirit was trying to choke out with Paul. It, can, it was after him and after him and after him until Paul had enough. <laughs> he set the record straight for show. But the python spirit was operating through her to, 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 to attack Paul. And for you, it might be a spirit of manipulation. Is I don't want to use the word after because it feels like, you, you know, you're running from the devil, you know. Pastor, I can't go. Manipulation's after me. <laughs> when I say that, that, that he's scheming things. Or it can be a controlling spirit. Or it can be an Absalom spirit. Absalom is in the, in the, in the Old Testament, and an Absalom spirit deals with a, a bitterness and unresolved offenses. That's how the enemy, that's how the enemy works. That's how he, he traps. The enemy wants you to get bent out of shape. The enemy wants somebody to say something that you have an offense on you, and now you can't do the work of ministry 
That was another thing Pap was preaching. He was busting out Timothy and doing the work of an evangelist. You can't do the work of ministry, what he's called you to do, because you're just bound up with Absalom. Absalom got you. Or whether a Jezebel spirit. And I'm here to tell you, Jezzy is not with high heels and a short skirt. You have high heels on today? <laughs> he talks about in the book of Revelation, he talks about in the last days, be careful that there will be, Jezzy will come after you. Or it can be a, a, a spirit of, of witchcraft, which is intimidation and deception. A spirit of witchcraft will operate through people. We talked about this python spirit. So right before Joe was getting ready to go to basic, Joe come running upstairs going crazy. Like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, there's a snake in the house. We're like, what? There ain't no snake in the house. So we go down, and Joe's room's downstairs. So he was going down the steps. And a big old black snake. Yeah. Right on the stairs. But it was a good teaching moment for our kids. Because he was, he was, he was a little bit out of shape thinking, I've been sleeping down there. And I almost came the next Sunday and preached a message entitled, Sleeping with the Enemy and You Don't Even Know It. But he's like, Dad, how did it happen? How did, how, how did it happen? How did it happen? And I, I just, I was on it. I, I'd become my parents about open doors. Growing up, I don't know if your parents were ever on you. Close the door, you know, money don't grow on trees. You're letting everything in. I do the same thing with these girls. Close the door. They'll leave the door open. I was like, bud, that's what happens when you open a door. The enemy, are y'all still with me today? In the, in, the, in the enemy, in the enemy comes in. And he'll find, he'll find his vessel to work through. It could even be this. Uh, let me throw myself in there. A Leviathan spirit. A Leviathan spirit. It's not necessarily, that, that terminology is not used. It's kind of like Python, spirit of divination. You start breaking things down in the Greek. But Leviathan comes from the book of Job, the book of, it's in the book of Psalms, and it's in the book of Isaiah. And the closest word picture, just to, not for the sake of time, but the closest word picture in Hebrew for a Leviathan is a crocodile. And what does a crocodile do? A crocodile will grab, it's different from a python. A python will wrap around and squeeze, but a, a, a crocodile will grab a hold of you, and then it begins to thrash. It begins to go back and forth. It'll thrash till you're too tired to fight. It tosses you back and forth until you're too tired to fight. Has anyone ever had to battle a Leviathan spirit? Let, let me put it this way. Let, let me put it this way. Let, let, me, let me put it this way. You have somebody or you're trying to talk to somebody, and one minute they're up, and one minute they're down, and the next minute it's here, and the next minute they want this, and the next minute this happens, and the next minute this happens, and you don't know about this, and oh, I don't know about here, and they're just going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. You don't even know what to do with yourself. You're so tired. This spirit wants you to give up. I strategically wore this outfit today. I wore it on purpose. I wore it on purpose today. Why? Because, uh, what, a month ago or something? So we're on YouTube. And some guy gets on YouTube and just starts bashing me. You're dressed like a clown. That's a clown pre. Doesn't say anything about my preaching. Doesn't say anything about, you know, breaking down the hermeneutics of the word. Doesn't say anything. You, you, that, that's a preacher. He a clown pre I almost wore big shoes today. He, he a clown preacher. 
Now me, instead of getting mad and getting on there and arguing with him and fighting with him, I knew just like Jesus when dealing with Peter, I wasn't dealing with him. I was dealing with the spirit that was behind him. And I said, I know what you up to, Leviathan. I know what you up to. And I almost, I almost told the team to send this emoji to him. Because that emoji is letting him know, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not fighting with you. Some of you need to get this emoji on your phone and send it to some friends and send it to some people. I'm not arguing with you no more. I'm not fighting with you no more. I've been too tired. I'm too tired to serve. I'm too tired to go to church. I'm too tired to worship because I'm caught up in your drama because you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I don't got time for that. Look at your neighbor and say, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have time to be caught up in games. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. Too tired to minister to your kids. Too tired to have your ministry. What's your mar- if you're married, that's your ministry. Hello? One step further? Can we go one step further? Ephesians talks about darkness. The men are doing a Bible study, and they're doing the Bible study on the armor of God. And it talks about the same avenue. It goes down the same road about our weapons. And it talks about a, a spirit of darkness. It talks about battling against principalities and powers. In darkness, that word that 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 darkness is in in the in the Greek is the word cosmocrater. Is the word cosmocrater, and 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 it gets and if you break that down, cosmo is space, right? The cosmo is the is the space, and it's talking about the darkness. And and if you really dive into that, if you really dive into it, he's talking about. The space between your two ears. How the enemy will attack your mind. Let, 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 me, let me throw it this way. Let me throw it this way. Have you ever or even heard somebody say, I'm in a dark place mentally? We all understand we're all dysfunctional. That's why we're here, right? If you're perfect, then just close your ears because you're not going to be able to relate to this. All my perfect people, you can, you can go outside now. Have you, ever, have you ever just had a thought that was so far away from the things of the kingdom? A, a worthless thought. A thought that's you're no good. A thought that just, you're a disappointment. A thought, you're driving to work and a, and a thought comes. It's a cosmocrater spirit. It, it attacks your mind. That's why the Bible constantly is talking about renew your mind. Renew your mind. Driving to work and a thought comes. I'm not talking just a thought. I'm talking about darkness. The dark, that's what he's talking about. He says, you'll battle darkness. I'm talking about, I'm talking about dark. Just, just a, a dark, like things that churches don't even want to talk about. Just a dark, it's called a cosmocrater. And then if you try to, if you try to battle that in the natural, if you try to battle that in the fleshly, what I'm talking about, you'll be a hot mess. It's that that darkness that's telling you you're no good. It's that darkness that's telling you you're worthless. So what do I do? I I have these things. I have these battles, Pastor. I have these thoughts. I have this this situation. I'm in this relationship. I'm in this 
problem. I, I, I have this stuff going. I got Leviathan. I got, I got Python hanging off my leg. I got Leviathan hanging off my side. I got Cosmo Crawder spinning around my head. Somebody help me. Pastor, I got them all around me. I'm walking like this. They all attach to me. What do I do? You warfare. You warfare. And the Bible teaches us how to warfare. Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter. Jude chapter 1. If somebody tells you at work, say, well, I read from, our pastor preached from Jude chapter 3. But like, you lie. My pastor said, All right. well, he, my pastor said you were devil to begin with. Now my pastor said you don't know your word. Listen, yet Michael the archangel in contending, somebody shout contending. Contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. There's, there's so much we can glean, but we don't have the time. But li- look at this. Michael, the archangel, right, is contending. Is contending with Satan himself. The angel and the devil were contending for the body of Moses, what it says. The angel is saying, it's mine. Satan saying, it's mine. The angel saying, it's mine. Satan is saying, it's mine. They are contending. Some of you have been contending for your son. Satan's been saying, I got your boy. But you're going, no, I've been going to Impact Church and pastor's saying, he's the Lord's. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And some of you are contending for, some of you are contending for your daughter and the enemy's like, no, your daughter is mine. But you're like, no, 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 she's of the Lord. I prayed for her, I believe for her. And some of you have been contending for your family and Satan is saying, I got your family, but you're over here saying, no, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And so there's, there's a... Can I preach this thing just a little bit up in here? We're contending back and forth. There's a contention. Some of you are contending. There's a contention going. And it's Satan saying, no, it's mine. And you're like, no, 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 no. He said he promised me joy. Joy is mine. And Satan says, no, I'm stealing your joy. And you're over here. He says, no, this peace I give you, the peace I give you, the world can't give it. And the world can't take it away. But Satan's over here saying, no, I'm going to take your peace. Maybe you're contending for your marriage. Maybe you're contending for your grandkids. Maybe you're contending for your finances. Are you still with me today? The enemy thinks he has it, but today you got to set the record straight by telling the enemy, the Lord rebuke you. Because some of you are contending for peace of mind. Some of you are contending, if I could just, I I, I just want peace. I just want peace of mind. If I could just get, it's like a person going through a desert that has not had water. You're like, Pastor, I just need one day of just peace of mind. I'm like going through the, the desert. It's like a drop in here. And the enemy's like, I have your mind. The enemy says, I will take that. But you're over here, it says, no, no no it's God but you you have to say joy is mine peace is mine healing is mine abundance is mine restoration is mine overflow is mine he says, the, the, the angel said I'm not even going to fight with you going back to, 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 to Peter and Jesus Jesus said I'm not going to fight with you Peter I'm not going to argue with you. Give thee behind me. And Michael, the archangel, said, I ain't even arguing with you, doc. The Lord rebuke you. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. You could do better than that. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. If you would, I'm just ending it out. Jump to your feet real quick. Jump to your feet real quick. Listen, and I'm finishing and bringing it on home. If you got mountains, if you got mountains in your life, if you got mountains in your marriage, if you got mountains in your finances, if your kids are battling mountains, if there's things going on in your life, you have got to learn to rebuke some stuff. And to learn to walk in the victory that Christ has won for us. 
This is learning to walk in that victory. That is learning to walk in that victory. Somebody shout out, rebuke you. Before we go any further, I want you to get out of your seat, high five three people and tell them you got to rebuke that thing. High five somebody and tell them you got to rebuke that thing. You got to rebuke that thing. You got to rebuke it. You got to rebuke that thing. You got to rebuke that thing. How many are ready to rebuke that thing? Hey, give me a, give me a little volume. I can't hear myself and I'm going to run my voice out. Hey, 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 hey. How many are ready to rebuke that thing? Somebody shout, I rebuke you. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. Fear. Fear. Now, you got to be better than that. Fear. Fear. Depression. Doubt. Worry. Anxiety. Oh, I wish I had five more minutes to preach this because I would really preach it up. Because somebody has got to grab a hold of this. Somebody has got to grab a hold of You have got to walk in this victory. I get, can I take it one step? It's not even in my notes, but I, can I take it one step? Yeah. Hey, Haman was trying to destroy Esther. You know the one for such a time as this? And, and, and so God turned the whole thing around, but Haman is a betrayal of the enemy himself. And even the children, uh, e e e even the Jews nowadays still see Haman as the, the enemy. And when the time of Pura comes around every year, anytime uh, they read the story of Esther and Pura, when they read the story, anytime Haman, you can read it, Google it for yourself. Anytime Haman's name comes up when they're reading it during Pura, they stomp their feet. Yeah. And that's how some of you got to do today. You got to. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I ain't fighting with you. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not debating with you. I'm not messing with you. Let me come over here. Let me come. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go one more time. Ready? No, give me, give me, give me, give me as I'm going up. Give me. Ready, ready, ready? Yeah. Come on. One more time. One more time. One more time. All right. I almost fell over on that one, but come on. Worry. I rebuke you. Are you ready? Worry. Anxiety. Heaviness. Python. Leviathan. Cosmo Crotter. Cosmo Crotter. Cosmo Crotter. Cosmo Crotter. Jezebel. Witchcraft. Stinking thinking. Sickness. You better stomp in them cowboy boots. You better boots go boogie up in this mouth. Somebody shout sickness. Division. Discord. I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. I just want to, I want, I want to help liberate somebody. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and just something ain't right? Now, I said not everything's the devil. Some of you woke up in the night because you 55 years old and eating a bunch of jalapenos. No, no that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> she served me a sandwich of jalapenos. I was like, why'd you put jalapenos? Should you be fine? Boy, I was up all night, y'all. <laughs> but sometimes you wake up and just something, something, yeah. What'd you say, Mom? Ain't right. Something ain't right. 
f fear grabs you. Worry, like not a, not a typical worry, just something gripped you, you know. The Bible says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. What was Jesus doing in the middle of the storm? Sleeping. Sometimes when you wake up in the middle of the night and something's gripping you, when a spirit of failure grabs a hold of you, when a spirit of failure grabs a hold of you, I don't know about the ladies, but I know for me, there's been times a spirit of failure has gripped me. Wake up and just consume me, failing as a father, failing as a husband. Like a disappointment. But you got to learn, I rebuke you. Jesus, I think Jesus got up out of the boat when he was sleeping, rebuked the storm, and then went back to sleep. So we're going to hit that. I'm going to help somebody. When you wake up in the middle of the night. No, come on. When I wake up in the middle of the night. If you're struggling with your kids. Yeah. What, no, that's it. That's it. When you're struggling with kids, whether they, if they go to school or whatever, march in that room, stomp your foot and tell that devil, tell that spirit, tell that thing, I rebuke you. We are taken back. You might be saying to your kid, the enemy's like, he's mine. He's mine. No, 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 no. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my peace back. I'm taking my family back. I'm taking my marriage back. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. A quitting spirit comes on you. I said, if a quitting spirit comes on you, when temptation comes knocking at your door. I like it. It's putting that foot down and say, no, I'm walking. I'm walking in victory. Do you got one more in you? Can we, do we got one more in you? If you got, shake your neighbor, say you got one more in you? Yeah, yeah, no, if, if they looking at you funny, shake the other neighbor and say, you got one more in you? You got one more in you? You got one more in you? You, you got one more in you? You, you get, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do the last one, we'll do it, we'll do, we'll do a good one. Because somebody whispered in my ear earlier and says, man, bust out addiction. I said, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, you say, what do you mean? Because, because somebody here today has something that has a hold of you. The Bible tells me your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were bought with a price. And that thing has a hold of you. Feels like it can't let, no, Pastor, you don't know. I, it, oh, it's got a hold. My, my family's had it. Everybody, it's got a hold of me. No, we're walking in it. And you keep going every day. You keep every, every day, every day. What I'm teaching here the last couple weeks, this is not just a once done and then just go do everything. You've got to be mindful of the things of the kingdom. About the doors and walk in your authority. Because the enemy is going to be like, okay, let's see what you got, homeboy. Right? So let's hit this last one. Like I rebuke you with the, with the drums going crazy till they break. Well, don't break them because I don't want to buy new ones. But just drums going and just this last one and, we, and we're ending it out. I, whoever's doing announcements, get ready, announcements person, because I am handing the baton to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are, are you, give me a little. Uh, all right, we're going. And you say, well, I don't have that. Somebody besides you might have it. We're breaking it for everybody. Last, last look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You're not alone in this. You're not alone. You're not alone. We got you. We got you. We got you. You're not alone. You're not fighting alone. You're not fighting. We talk about don't do life alone. We don't let you fight alone. We don't let you fight. Come on. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Addiction. 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 Ma, you have your TikTok. You wanted a TikTok? Run up here real quick. Let her around here. She wanted to do a TikTok real quick. 
Run, run with your TikTok. You got to go quick. You got to go quick. You got to go quick. Come do an announcement. She wanted a TikTok. She been doing a TikTok. We're going to bust it out on TikTok right here. Are you ready? I'm going to shout addiction. You're going to shout out rebuke you. We're going to help somebody out there in the land to let them know. You got it. You got it. You wanted it. I'm giving you a moment. You got it. Pull it up. You ready? Let's go. Ready? One, two, three. Addiction. 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 Somebody shout yes. I don't even know what to say, honestly. Like every. <laughs> Every single message that pastor preaches is just like insane to me. Like I get something so helpful like every single Sunday and I'm just incredibly grateful for that and God has really blessed us with a powerful preacher like him. So I just want to shout out to Pastor Kevin. He's amazing. Ushers, you can make your way. Um, I want to encourage you to come up for prayer today. We have a prayer team up here battling anything that Pastor mentioned through his sermon, spiritual warfare, whatever has a hold on you, whatever has just dragged you down, whatever it is, please come up for prayer. That is why we are up here. I love our church's motto, don't do life alone, you have to do it alone. Please come up for prayer. Do not hesitate. If God is putting that on your heart, get the prayer today. We want to lay hands on you. We want to be there for you. I don't want to, if you come up for prayer, we have prayer cards at your seats. You can fill that out and slip it in the offering bucket and we can pray for you throughout the week. I just have a few announcements before I let you go. We have Impact Couples Friday, October 18th, 7 to 9, hosted by Rick and Brandy Neely. So it's bring your favorite side dish. So you can bring your own food. The details to that are on the app or you can talk to them. Brandy's right up here in the front. Um, next step is Sunday, October 20th at 5.30 in Weirton. So register on the app as well. Um, we also have a website, 3.org, for any of that information. We have a mountain moving Sunday. Um, we are believing for mountains to be moved. Um, we are kicking the day off um, with fasting and worship night on October 23rd. So don't miss that. And we have one service on October 27th at 10.30. That is the Mountain Moving Sunday. We have new merch. New merch. That's awesome. And we have a baptismal and food and fellowship. So you do not want to miss that. Mountain Moving Sunday, October 27th at 10.30. One service. And as always, there is communion available in the um, if you want to partake in that. Um, feel free to do so. And another announcement. Youth group is tonight. And tonight is super important for you to come because we have so many um, we have been planning for the next couple of months. And we are also trying to um, do some other really cool stuff. And I know a lot of you in the youth group, and I know that you are going to want to be involved in this. So don't miss that tonight at 530 at our house, right? 530? Okay, awesome. And that's it. So let me pray for you, and then we can get you on your way. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for just being the God that you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love and your patience. God, I pray for every single person in this room, the battles that they're facing, that they don't talk about. Lord, I pray that you would give them the strength and the endurance to keep battling and to keep fighting and not give up, even though Satan is just whispering in their ear, give up. You're not gonna make it, give up. God, I pray that they would remember what your word says. I pray that they would remember that you're in the battle for us. We just have to keep fighting, not give up. God, thank you so much for what you did today. Thank you for the chains that you have broken today. Thank you for our amazing church and our amazing pastor, God, that brings the word like fire. Thank you, God, for being in this room, for your presence. Thank you for breaking those chains today. I pray for every person in this room that you would protect them throughout their week, that they would have 
just an amazing week full of peace and joy and love like they have never experienced before, God. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.